Good morning, everyone, and welcome to HCC on Facebook this morning. Uh, whoever you are and wherever you're joining from, you're very welcome. Uh, in the last few weeks, we've been um, considering um, stories that Jesus told and miracles that he did. And uh, this morning and for the next few weeks, we're going to be focusing on Jesus and how he came to be born. Um, we've got a great morning in store for you. So I'm just going to pray before we start and then we'll get straight in. So, Father, I thank you for today. Um, I thank you that we can meet together uh, using Facebook, even though we're separate. Thank you that you are in our midst. And I pray that you would be with us and speak to us this morning uh, through what we see and hear. Amen. So we've got a bit of Christmas fun for you this morning. Uh, we've got a, a carol <coughs> uh, recorded by some of our HCC musicians and some others who may have mistaken it as an audition for The X Factor. So... Well, I hope you've recovered from that. <laughs> uh, this morning, we're uh, going to be starting a new series um, about uh, the wonders of Christmas. Uh, we've got four or five um, <clears throat> talks um, over the next few weeks, uh, which are going to be focusing on the Christmas events. And today's is um, about Mary. Uh, so, uh, first of all, we're going to be uh, looking at some scriptures uh, that speak about um, Jesus' arrival and um, things that happened to Mary. So, let's see those now. Isaiah 9, 2, 6 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward 
and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Luke 1, 26 through 35 In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Okay, we're going to have Pauline speak to us now. Um, so I'll just ask Jackie to pray for Pauline before she speaks. Yeah, Lord, we thank you for <clears throat> what Pauline has prepared today. Lord, we pray that you would speak through her to us and uh, help us just to uh, receive what you would say to us today. And just request Pauline now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you've all recorded from the DVD or the video or whatever it was that we've just seen. Obviously Christmas and the COVID pandemic is having some very strange effects on people. As you go around Hexham at the moment, it's obvious that Christmas is coming. I think this year more than ever, there's lights all over the place and individual households have put lights in their gardens, on their hedges, all over the place. And this year it seems particularly welcome that we have so much light and attractive demonstrations of a different season. We've just had two readings, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah. Now, when you're looking at scriptures, it helps to know who wrote them and when they wrote them. And to help us understand the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we need to remember that he's a prophet. Now, Sometimes they get a very bad report and some people think they're just awkward people who are com always complaining. But actually they're God's messengers, usually at a time when people need to be reminded that God's in charge and he wants to say something very important to them. Isaiah was just like that. In fact, much of what Isaiah says was true and people did need to wake up and realise that they needed to be following God more effectively. The problem was that they weren't very good at listening and doing something about it. He also was someone who not only, as we would traditionally say, looked to the future, but he talked about what was needed now. So they had to learn also what he was saying about needing to reform the way they were living and adjust themselves to be more like what God wanted them for them, but also to look to the future. And it was to look into the future that he brought them real hope in this reading. This was written 700 years before Jesus was born. And that is an amazing fact. Isaiah was speaking to the nation of Judah, which was the southern kingdom of the nation that had split into two after the time of King Solomon. The northern kingdom was Israel and they were at war together. In fact, they were what we would call in a civil war situation. They'd had hundreds of years of dispute and unrest. Numerous kings had come and gone, 
Some had been good and some had definitely not been so good. The current king, Ahaz, was definitely in the category of being a bad king. If you want to check out what sort of things he got up to, then please do so later. But it's too early in the morning to talk about some of the things that he did to his people and also his own family members. So they'd had this period of dispute and unrest and un uncertainty. Now, we've been going through a similar period just now, haven't we, with uncertainty and um, emotional and physical and spiritual uh, stresses and strains at this time. They were feeling a real sense at that time when Isaiah spoke to them of despair and anxiety and a real fear for the future. They literally feared being invaded and overwhelmed by an enemy, just as we have been um, thinking and dealing with a situation where we may have felt overwhelmed by the enemy. Isaiah was a prophet, that is, God used him to speak to the people, not only about the future, but about their current situation. He wanted them to wake up and take notice that God was in charge and he had a plan for them. Now, everybody gets excited when they hear about a new birth in the family. Will they be a boy or a girl? Will they be dark or fair? Will they be musical or artistic, sporty or a bit of a bookworm? Isaiah gives us great detail about this child 700 years before he was born. Now, this isn't the only reference in the Old Testament written about this event. In fact, many different writers over hundreds of years talk about this, sometimes giving great detail about what would happen. In chapter 9 of Isaiah, in verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Prince of Peace. The first thing we discover is that this child, and he would come as a baby, is a boy. He would be given, he would be a gift to us, and the government, that is the authority, would be on his shoulders. And then we have four very memorable descriptions of this child. In fact, it says his names will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is a birth announcement that reads more like a job description. I don't think if you entered something like that into the current birth columns that people would really understand what you were talking about. At first glance, two first two phases could be stated about a hoped for future ruler. In fact, that's probably what the people thought Isaiah was talking about, which the nation would not love, to, which nation would not love to have a leader who brought peace and a leader who was wise and brought wise counsel to situations. Of course, the people who heard what Isaiah said longed for a leader who would rescue them. But two other statements, mighty God, everlasting father, could not be confused with an early earthly ruler. Isaiah was bringing real hope to the people. This child would be wise and guide his people, would bring peace between man and God, but he would also be mighty God and he would be everlasting and he would be acting as a father to his people. This brings real hope to the people. Isaiah then goes on to give more details in verse 7. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So in this second part of, uh, it's actually verse 7, we find out that he, this baby would be of the line of David. He would be royal. He would be a significant person. And that he would reign forever with justice and righteousness. And when it says, it talks about the zeal of the Lord Almighty doing this, it just merely means that it would be God who would be behind it all. His authority, his power, his might would achieve all this. Thinking about Mary now, in the second reading in Luke's Gospel, we hear about the visit of the angel Gabriel to Mary. And of course, this is a very famous and popular scripture that we hear all this all very regularly at Christmas time in school assemblies, in nativity plays, maybe on the TV, and maybe in the Bible if we read it for ourselves as well. And sometimes we see it on Christmas cards. 
And we find out that Jesus would be, sorry, that Mary would have a son and she would actually have a name to call him. He would be called Jesus. And the angel tells him that he, this baby will be son of the Most High, i.e. that he would be God and he would be on the throne of David. Again, we'll have that royal lineage. He will reign forever and his kingdom will never end. With hindsight and knowing what we know now about the life of Jesus and his death and resurrection, we can make, begin to make some sense of these events and understand what it means for us. A child would reign forever, forever. His kingdom will come. This brings real hope in the darkest time. Here in the UK, this seems literally to be true, that we need that real light at this dark time. We've had many struggles this year, but the message of Christmas is a future hope, but also the knowledge of God is with us. And to use another expression to describe what Jesus is like, Emmanuel, that just means God with us. Just one last thought. What happened to the people of Judah that Isaiah was speaking to? Sadly, they did not listen to the many warnings that Isaiah and other prophets brought to them over many years. They declined to take up the offer of reforming their situation. The northern kingdom collapsed and the southern kingdom, Judah, which we've been, which the message of Isaiah was to this morning, was taken into captivity in Babylon. Yet even then, in the toughest times, God was with them and brought them through and restored them to their homeland. Whatever tough times we are facing, this is a time to turn to God, maybe for the first time this Christmas, and know his fatherly care for his son, Emmanuel, God is with us. Thank you, Pauline. I'm always amazed that um, things that were spoken about Jesus and uh, what was to happen in his life were um, spoken or written so many years before he came. Uh, but it was good this morning to hear about the real hope uh, that he brings into our lives. And um, we heard in the reading about the angel uh, talking to Mary and God still speaks today, maybe not through an angel, uh, but perhaps through a friend or a song or a video or through scripture. So uh, I hope that you will have your spiritual ears tuned to what God has to say to us in these times. If you want to know more about the Jesus that we're talking about, uh, then do get in touch with us either through our Facebook page uh, or uh, the web page or see us when we're down at the Eden Lounge. So we're going to have more music now, another carol that we know well. It's called Joy to the World.
You're all singing along there. We're going to see uh, a video now that um, considers what Christmas is really about. Um, we often hear people say uh, that they're full of Christmas spirit, and sometimes that's not such a good thing. Uh, but this is going to show us what the real Christmas spirit is. So uh, we're just going to close in prayer. So I'll ask Jackie to, to close for us. Well, we just thank you for all we've been able to um, take part in this morning, uh, receiving what Pauline prepared and, and the Christmas songs. So we just ask that you would be with us, Lord, as we go into this um, coming week. We ask for your blessing on us, that you would keep us safe and, um, yeah, just be with us this week. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's it for this morning. Um, we will be having coffee in a couple of minutes, so hopefully the number for the coffee will either be stuck to your microwave like ours is, or it'll come up on the screen in a minute.